mighty job to make all the noise. Show all the love for Miss Rosario Dawson! This uh, is the perfect end cap to a great weekend. Um, I know you wasn't you weren't with us the entire time. But how has today been for you? It's been awesome. I love that. I, love that. I appreciate y'all so much. Yes, yes. You're awesome. It's been so great. And being here at the Chicago Con is always my favorite. You know it. Yeah. Um, specifically Woo. because I got to meet Carrie Fisher Come on. here Come on. because of the con, and that was before I could have even imagined I would be a part of the Star Wars Come world. On. And it just always resonates with me. I had like the dopest hug, and I just remember like everyone we had signed, and it was like some of the biggest celebrities I'd ever met. It was so exciting, and then the whole place shut down, and she still had a line around the block. Like, and she was there with her little dog, and just so sweet and so wonderful, and everyone was so great with her. And I just remember just like having such a feeling of like, wow, what a beautiful fandom. Like I get to be a part of this because of so many projects I've been a part of, but to see the level of like love that she was getting and like that community was just something I admired from afar. And it just blows my mind to be able to be here now and have people talking about how much Star Wars means to them and be able to say like, I'm a part of that as Absolutely. well now. So it's just Absolutely. a cool thing to be here. Yeah. So I got a couple of questions that I want to ask you before we throw it out to the I, audience. Can I just say I'm super impressed because you interview me all the time now yeah. because we've been doing a lot of these cons That's recently so and you always throw out some like to totally different questions and it just shows how lazy a lot of other interviewers <laughs> are because they kind of repeat the same questions and you always give me something good and I'm right always like, sure, let me right think about sure. that. That's so dope. Just saying, you know, for all you aspiring journalists, like, you know. Make it interesting. Keep it cool. Unless you go know, like, here now, why do you do this to me? Is this supposed to be for you? Exodus. I got my Cuban contingent here. Where's my family? What up, though? Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Ah, yeah. Let the valley be the souls. Give it up for that. The valley be the souls. You roll with a squad. I love you for that. Roll deep. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I love it. I love it. 
Okay, so you always gotta be that thing, you know what I'm saying? Because you never know. Okay, so let's get serious. You illuminate every role that you've ever been in. You shine in every room you walk into. Wasn't that cool how you went into like interview? Like, That's right, you see how she says, boom. Did you hear that? Boom. That was right. dope. That was so professional. <laughs> from the car okay, like, like, okay, 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 but no seriously you you are truly the epitome of a star but are there people that you get starstruck by people hit me all the time what yes. <laughs> when people say i'm starstruck i'm like not yet yeah, not yet, not not yet. yet. <laughs> watch your mouth but no do you do I'm you punny, like, like, so i'm all for the punny i'm all for the punny but yeah Big is, pun. is there anyone Damn, uh, little, 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 did we know that we were? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a serious deep cut. Y'all missed it. That's all right. Um, <laughs> it's a New York thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, is, are there any stars that, like, when you have met them, you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh? I'm telling Well, Carrie Fisher was definitely one of them. And if anyone's seen the BTS of when yes. I was filming on Boba Fett, everyone yes. saw how I, like, completely lost my marbles meeting Mark for the first time. Um, actually, I couldn't believe they put me on blast like that, but I was like, that's cool. Um, but I have to say, like, my like two biggest ones. Um, I got to meet um, David Bowie. Whoa. I know. No, 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 we need that story. And I'm friendly, like, I'm dropping names here. I'm friendly with Iman. Um, she's fire. She's, like, come through the Lori Side Girls Club and all kinds of cool things, but David's, like, my person. I have a, a star tattoo for Black Star, oh. specifically for him, and, um, I just remember just meeting him and just, like, losing my mind. And then the only other person that I honestly could not, and, like, who's probably my number one okay. is Tim Curry. Whoa, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I knew I wasn't like the other girls when I watched Legend and I was rooting for <laughs> Darkness. I was like, who wants sparkly ass Tom Cruise when you can have barrel chested hood horns? Right. Right. Tim Curry, like hello. Right. Um, and I remember meeting, almost meeting him like 20 years ago, over okay. 20 years ago, at an upfront in New York. Mm -hmm. And I saw him, he was in a wheelchair. There's all these people around him. And I walked close enough to see him better, but not so close that I could hear his voice because I swear to you, I was worried I would pass out. <laughs> but if I heard, you know, toxic love. Like, I mean, like, it's, like, I, it's so many things, you know, like, communism is a red herring. Like, right, right. I, it's just so many different movies. You just encapsulate all of your and just, oh. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, like, absolutely obsessed with Tim Curry. He's the reason why I do voiceover work. I, like, I literally, it's, it's wanting to do stuff with special effects and, um, and prosthetics love to that. comedy to just all the things. Like, he has the range, the range of that man. And then I got to actually meet him, not personally, but online, because we did a reading of the Rocky Horror Picture Show mm -hmm. for a fundraiser. And it was the most amazing thing, because I told him how, I see, I have him in my blood. My mom dressed up like Frankenfurter when she was eight months pregnant of me. Wow. So like, it's but since I was out of, I wasn't even yeah. out of the womb yet, yeah. and I was yeah. just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally in it, you know, just like, I remember watching the movie for the first time when I was 10, and there was this, that moment where he's coming down the elevator and the platform shoe, you can see it just like pumping before the, with That's the right. cape. And I'm sitting there like this, watching the TV and going, I just feel like my life is about to change. And then it did, <laughs> forever. Um, and so I did a short film that I did and I even did a mock-up, like kind of homage to that exact beat. Where, where is this? We need this, we need the short film. It's great, it's called Boundless. But it's, I'm just saying, I'm that obsessed with him. And so I remember telling him the story of how my mom had dressed up like him um, for like a live, you know, they did like the, you know, you do like the okay. premiere screening yeah. or whatever of the movie they would do every Friday. Absolutely. And then she was performing and she was eight months pregnant with me. Like, so she, her like corset was like out to here. And I remember he's looking at us, he's like, in, you know, off screen, just talking. He was like, Frank and Furt, I would have loved to have been pregnant. <laughs> So very long stories. No, but that was, oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, I love your mom even more now. Um, Isn't she the best? Yes, literally. No, that's fantastic. Now you brought up voiceover work, and yeah. you've done the voices for like Batgirl and Artemis and Wonder Woman. Um, clearly showcasing like your your comic book love. Yeah. 
if you had Michael Bean is here, by the way, and I got yes, to tell him is. not only did we, you know, commence Ahsoka yes. together in Mandalorian, but now we get to be a part of the Terminator world because yes. I voice Kokoro That's right. in this new iteration of a new Terminator story that's about to be coming out soon. Me? Which is so yeah. definitely check yes. it out. It's awesome. The that Japanese awesome. animation, it's so amazing. It amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. Um, okay, so what I was going to ask, we will yeah. throw that out there, um, because since you brought up the Terminator thing, I wasn't sure we was allowed to talk about that. Um, I think I announced it. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly not the worst, actually. So. It's out here now. It's out here now. It's out here When it comes to that, that franchise, how, how impressive is it that it has been able to advance with technology and the understanding of what the future could be how impressive is it to see what this new iteration mm. is? I mean, the technology was so different right? and the fathoming of it was so different when it came out when I was a kid mm -hmm. and my family and I used to debate like, no, you can't go back in the timeline. And blah, blah, blah. Like we literally have serious debates about this. <laughs> <laughs> Every time the movie came out, I'd be like, no, but see, I really think that <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually. Um, so it's really dope to see, you know, sort of this new version and sort of concept and, and yes. like, I, I just think it's, it's really, you know, thinking about being like a truckie when mm -hmm. I was a kid and like tablets and all of those things just being this idea of the future, you know, I remember, you know, go-go gadget belts and like yes. the watch and all of it was just like cool one day and now that's just like our kid's normal. I went um, bowling <laughs> right. recently and they had this little robot that was giving, bringing the food out to people. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he was yeah. bringing the food out to folks in their lanes. And I'm looking at this thing like, yo, Wally. Like, not even, not, not even, not even, because take it back, take it back to uh, Circuit, Short Circuit. Oh, uh, Johnny Fox. Johnny Fox. Come on. So I'm like Come on. looking at this like, whoa. And this like six year old kid is just goofing around with it going, <laughs> and like messing with it because as it's doing, you know, it has all the cameras and right. it's trying, so the, the, the little robot's like, I can't move, there's something in the way. And this kid's playing with it and I'm like, that's your baseline, like that's your normal. No, 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 that's how that's Skynet That's so comes. wild. Like, and that's right how there. Skynet takes us, guys. Um, they they, they lull us into comfortability with this stuff. And now we do die. Um, that's so. awesome. Now, but I like that there's a conversation yes. because it kind of moves to a different thing of not just this technology potentially being very scary right. and like first being lulled with the comfort of it that it can bring and then what, what the damage it can do, but also this sort of other kind of idea going beyond it of like how we can connect with it. Yes. yes how yes, yes. actually that, you know, it can, we can collaborate, we can, we can coexist with it. Is that, is, is that a possibility? Yes. And, uh, and I like that this new version iteration of this kind of begs that question in a really interesting way. Make some noise for that, y'all. Come on. <laughs> Don't be so bossy. Not always. They cheer when they No, 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 no. You deserve all the cheers and they will give them to you. <laughs> Now, can you tell us if there Even are though he has more bracelets than me, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> what happened Between was... Between you and Hayden. What had happened was... <laughs> I just kept... No, because the last time you pointed out, I was like, he ain't got that many. I was like, I'm collecting all the bracelets. <laughs> You're just keeping them from each car. Every single show, I'm just adding to my arm. No, you can't cheat like that. What? Be of the what? Mm. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> can, you, can you tell us if there are any of the previous iterations from the tra or, or, uh, Transformer Terminator franchise that we should watch? to prep for watching your show? Um, I mean, I mean, the, I mean, number one is always the key, but I, I would say like, I, I think mm. that you don't necessarily have to. Even better. This takes place like just before. I mean, obviously if you know it, then it kind of Even okay. gives it to you, but I think that's what's cool about it is that it is for a new generation of people and their window in. And just the animation though is really remarkable and beautiful, but still very terrifying. Like it's really intense. Um, and, and thought provoking. Can so wait. I'm really excited. Y'all want to come to my watch party? We all want to watch it together? That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Talk about real deep. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, so having worked with a few different uh, actors, I found that many of them don't like to watch their work. Do you they like to watch? That. They They do say that. <laughs> do you like to watch your, your movies? Yeah, so. 30 years ago, this summer. Let's go. Let's talk about it. I filmed my first project. Come on now. Which was kids. kids. And you were. <laughs> and I was 15. 
when yes. I got asked um, to audition for it, I only worked four days on the on the film, mm -hmm. and then the thousand dollars I got paid to work on that, my family went on a vacation to Texas because right. my dad grew up in Lubbock, Texas, and we drove from New York to Texas, and my mom was like, "I love it here," and then we moved to Garland, Texas, the suburb of Dallas, and um, and then a year later. Right. You know, Harmony Corinne and Larry Clark are like, yo, where have you been? We've <laughs> been searching for you. Where did you disappear to? Um, we have this, the movie's going to come out. And I was like, I didn't think anything was going to come out of it. They were picking people off the street for it. So I just didn't really think anything much of it. Um, and then they flew me out for this Harper's Bazaar photo shoot that they were doing. And I did not move back to Texas. I stayed. And I ended up meeting actually Hayden Christensen that that's right. summer. That's right. So that's right. next year, summer. Um, the movie was in the theaters. And you know, I started I, to start to start pursuing acting, um, and I have ADHD, and I completely lost my train of thought. Yes, no, no, no. I was asking about whether or not you watch. Oh yeah, so okay, okay. that, so that, yes. so that, so next year would be the year would be 30 years from the first time I watched myself on a film. That's awesome. You know, I had seen myself in this little short film thing that they did for Sesame Street. I don't know One if anyone out. saw That's that. Right. It was like a really cute short film for um, promoting community gardens in the, in the Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd seen like stuff like that and right. I thought that was pretty cool. But when I saw myself in Kids, I remember just being super blown away because I was a super nerd. Um, and a pre-calculus calculus tutor and like a virgin till I was 20 and like just like mm, like just not cool or any of this those is, things. These are all the things that we love about you. Because like, I overshare. <laughs> and um, truly, I did not need to know that. And um, but this character was this very sexually promiscuous character yes. who was just really endangering herself and you know to this day I still have people who come up to me and say watching that movie potentially saved their life because they were making some very risky choices and yes. decisions and actions and they suddenly p had a visual of what that looked like and you couldn't make that movie now today because we were all teenagers literally when we made that and it's banned you know in a lot of countries um, because of it you know and people are like oh euphoria and I'm like they're all in their 20s yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and it's like you can and it still has the resonance like the, the subject matter is there but there's a different quality to watching kids just because we really are children when we're filming it and you know, I, I remember just being so blown away. Like I was watching it and going, I really believe I'm that chicken head. Like I was like, oh snap. And to the point where actually when I started auditioning and wanting to continue acting, people thought because all of us were non-actors who were in it that I literally was that character. And so they didn't want to take the gamble on me for a really long time. And it wasn't really until my senior year of high school when Spike cast me and he got game. And gave me on, the character of Lala, and I had to really, you know, perform. Yes. Um, that he, I mean, he really changed my life because of it by giving me such a juicy character and role, um, and people starting to see that like I had range and that I was an actual proper actress, um, and and not just you know just a one trick pony. But it was it was such a special thing, and so I've always watched the stuff that I've done just to kind of make sure that the choices that I'm making are working and I, I learn a lot from it because you know I've learned on the on, on you know I've worked with so many great directors and sometimes they're not so communicative and they don't tell you what movie you're making and you watch it later and you're like oh I wish I would have known this was a black comedy like that would have been I might have said that line differently um, so it's just I, I find it really helpful and informative and if I if I'm uncomfortable watching me on there it's because I didn't do my job you know but if I if I'm feeling like I've disappeared into the character, I love that. The thing I can't watch, like I would never watch this interview. What? I'd be like, oh, why does my voice sound like that? And like, it's, it's a song. I'm what are you talking so about? dorky yeah. and like, did I need to did tell everybody when I lost my virginity? Awesome what are you talking about? I, I mean, I'm not balking at my... Every, like, that's all I'm really, I can do it both do. ways too, by the way. Like, I'm, I'm, saying, very, I'm, like, yeah, yeah. I'm great at cartwheels, that's not the thing, but... <laughs> It's just, you know, give me a line that I can study and then perform as a character. Like, having to watch myself, I'm like, who wants uh, I appreciate y'all. I don't know how y'all are doing it, but. <laughs> so listen, I'm going to open it up for you guys to ask some questions. we got two microphones. Be careful. Um, but as they line up, I'm going to ask you one last question. This one's personal. This one's deep. Um, as the commercial says, it only takes three licks to get to the center of the Tootsie Roll Pop. 
Do you think that that's true, or was the owl cheating by biting it? This is what you get for making you know, me I've been irate about this mm -hmm. for so many decades. Come on, come on, come on. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. why are you even going to ask the question if you're going to bite it? I'm, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, like, it's so not cool. I've, I've, been, I've been mad at that owl for a really facts. long time over facts. this. I have a whole different relationship with the owl and Ahsoka, obviously. But yes, yes. my first owl, like, we got beef to yeah, this day. Bit my, bit my sucker, bro. What are we... Okay. Also, I'm that person though. Okay. Is it, is it, it's absolutely impossible to continue to lick it all the way down. You have to, you end up biting it. Like, there's just no way. But definitely not after three licks though. Like, come okay. on. Okay, all right. I just, need, I just needed that confirmation. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate that. Go team. <laughs> We're going to start off this. I'm going to really try to be much faster with We're my answers, y'all. So we got I'm going to try to get through the line. Go for it, my friend. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? Doing all right. Good. Uh, huge fan of Brand and Ahsoka. Um, if there's a Star Wars musical, uh, what song would Ahsoka sing? Oh, oh today? That is a brilliant question. Get out of line. You can't ask such greatness like that. Wow. That's a good one. I'm taking it back. Yeah. There's a line. There's a line. Oh, that was chills. Whoa, is that the anticipation? <laughs> no, I love it. That was a great question. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, you said you're a Star Trek fan. My name is Khan. Hi. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, I I saw a video of you dressed as Ahsoka Tano, and you were riding like a kid's speeder, uh, <laughs> and just, just laid back on it. I was curious if there's a story behind that. Yeah, we you know it was actually one of those awesome moments where we were not being told to cover up in a full cape. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. were able to just kind of roll. Um, and I don't know, like everyone had been taking a ride around. And I'm New York and I'm a little Getra. So that's how I, that was my version. Like, you know, don't mess with a circa, you know what I'm saying? What? Like, what? Mm -hmm. Pull up. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi. What is your favorite Star Wars sound effect? Mm. Favorite Star Wars sound effect? I mean, it's <sighs> obviously like my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm a big fan of. Oh. <laughs> They're just all of it's really great. Though I have to say, I love those videos that people do online where they take the music and the sound out and right. they just like have us like our feet squeaking on the floor. And stuff. <laughs> That's my kind of ASMR. You know what I mean? It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, my name is Jessica, and I have ADHD too, so bear with me as I try to uh, <laughs> phrase my question correctly. Um, Rosario, first of all, I love you. Um, not in a creepy way, I promise. Um, I, now it's creepy. Yes. <laughs> Again, sorry. Um, Don't protest too much. <laughs> um, Ahsoka is my favorite Star Wars character. Um, as I'm 34 and she helped me get through a lot of dark times through my mental health journey. Um, so seeing you portray her in live action has just been amazing. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, my question to you is, I know all of us have gone on a journey of that of some kind, and I was, if you feel comfortable with this question, what do you um, personally like to do to help you with your mental health? Several things. One of the things I recognize when I'm not in a good place is I don't dance as much, um, and I'm not singing as much. Like, those are sort of my keys, like I'll notice that after a while. Um, Taking a bath is number one thing for me. Okay. I think it's because I saw Splash so many times when I was a child. <laughs> um, and I, I'm from Coney Island and we have the mermaid parade, so I totally, I am a mermaid, like it's just not even a question. Um, but I literally, I start to kind of 
go into a bad place. So I was like, number one thing, I have to be in a body of water, or be near, and I actually just learned something really interesting that when you know, our, you're next to like say a lake and it's really placid, like it literally, because we are composed mostly of water, like our body takes the resonance of the water that's nearest to us. And so it actually, that can really calm you. So I think that's so fascinating that my number one thing that I do for my mental health is take a bath um, and ground myself in salt water. Like I think that's just, that's my number one. And then music and dancing are really, really key. And I've started doing a lot more meditating, um, which has been really, really helpful. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, Thank blessings you. to you. Hello. Hello. Uh, Rosario, in preparation for your role as Ahsoka, what parts do you think you incorporated and wanted to focus on the most from Ahsoka's portrayal in The Clone Wars? Mm. Oh. What I really wanted to show how stubborn she was. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I think the thing that I got the most out of her was the gravity that you saw her kind of, um, that really kind of, uh, you could see the impact of, you know, the more and more she went into these different wars and battles and struggled with the loss of life that she was responsible for and how much that gave her pause and wanted to pull back and how she had to continue to push through. And I think that's one of the most genius things that Dave did in our show was really, by, by going back, obviously it helped for people who had never seen Clone Wars or Rebels to be able to have this glimpse of her past, but for the folks who did know it, and on both sides, to see just how young she was, to be this warrior in the middle of war. Um, and so I think that gravity was the thing that I, I always took to heart. Um, and I think that was what was the beautiful arc of our show, was being able to show her, start to make peace with that. Um, and what, she knows how that impacted her master, but how her own choices have already shown to her the, who, what kind of character she had, and that she finally is in a place where she realized she could pass on that kind of teaching to her Padawan. And so I, I, I just, I loved that. And I, I hope for her second season um, that we get to in, you know, enjoy a little bit that she's healed and, and had gotten a little bit more peace about that past and reckoned with it a little bit more that we'll be able to see her be a little bit lighter, not just in the color of her, of her dress, obviously now, but actually in her spirit, you know? Not that she's not gonna have conflict oh, in absolutely. the present and for the future, obviously, especially with Thrawn back mm -hmm. in the picture, but that, that part of her being a little healed, which I think you've been see, seen her be very stoic mm -hmm. um, in these, and on most of Ahsoka, and obviously in Boba and, um, and Mandalorian beforehand, but I, I think that'll be really nice to go back to a little bit of that lightness and that spark and that spunkiness that I really love in her in Clone Wars. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I said I was going to be fast. I'm so sorry. No, I'll speed it up. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I'm a huge fan of the lightsaber combat. Um, what was like the training when you had those twin lightsabers? Training? She just does that naturally. Like, <laughs> point taken. <laughs> um, awesome. Best thing ever, um, but I, I definitely, you know, I've, I've got some more training to do because, you know, I did walk home with a black eye at one point. Um, so I need to be able to protect my face better. Yeah, for sure. That's that's the plan. Yeah, but I love it, and that's one of one of these days when I shave my head, I'm gonna cosplay Ventress because. So bad. Thank you. That'd be so dope. Just for me. Hello. Two words. Night nurse. Now that like Doctor Strange is throwing the character to the side, that's not night nurse. We got our night nurse. Mm -hmm. Disney's still paying you. Mm -hmm. HR know who you are. Like Daredevil's coming back. What's up with this night nurse? Wait, that's wait, what wait, I want to know. Wait, 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 wait. Now, I've explained this before. Disney has shooters. <laughs> no, but also Disney knows where I am, so. Exactly. If I'm, I'm ready, she ready. There you go, there you go. There you go. I'd love to. Oh. I, I forgive Matt Murdock for the walk of shame. With uh, <laughs> <laughs> She-Hulk, no. I was gonna say, wait, wait a minute, that. wait. You, you, you was with Luke after that, though. I know, I know, I know. I'm just oh, okay, I was like, like no, I mean, it's pretty funny. I just wanted to be like, I mean, you know. You have moved on to some stuff. I know, I moved on, we're, you know, coffee, you know, we're like, All over the table, all over the table. Good 
Reese. Wow, oh, there's the children here. You got coffee. You spilled coffee all over the table. That's what I was saying. What you talking about? Next question. Next question. <laughs> I've been waiting 18 years to say that to you. Clerks, Clerks 2, Clerks 3, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Clerks 3. Love it, love it. Thank that you. Was it? That was oh it, my God. yes! I got that oh. We love to Becky. Respect, respect. 18 years Absolutely. I've been waiting to say that. That's all I want to say. My 18-year-old son and I really enjoy your work in those films. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Awesome, thank you. Hello. All right, so throughout your career, was there ever a costume or outfit that you remember as especially comfortable or especially uncomfortable when you're filming all day? The one you autographed today. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did, I did. But no, I would have to say um, my Gale costume was probably both. <laughs> the most comfortable and the most uncomfortable. Yep. And we figured out on the very last like two days of shooting, that because I and in that costume because it's just the strip of black with the you know strips on that's kind of going down like um, garters all the way down. Mm -hmm. She had made that from leather, the piece that came in the front. So I had a I had a standing board, and I could like kind of prop on a seat because I couldn't properly bend my knees oh, wow. because it was a strap of leather. And like the last two days of shooting, we we're like, oh, let's make that elastic. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, that that would that would be the one. I remember when they handed my costume to me, and I was like, "Cool, <laughs> this is gonna be great." Fun time. Yeah, that's the one. I, you know what I will say? Well, I have my my um, space suit from Pluto Nash, really? which yeah. which is only my mom loves, and maybe that one person. <laughs> But that was my first time in space, so and the Rocky Horror Picture Show was still playing on the moon. Boom! So yeah, that. Full circle. Full circle. Thank you. Hello. Uh, hello. Um, Clerks Three. Fantastic film. Thank you. Uh, my wife is a stone cold woman when it comes to movies. She does not show emotion. Uh, she has cried twice in her life at films. Uh, Clerks Three mm -hmm. and Godzilla minus one. Oh, it's so good. Dave texted me, he's like, it's so good. Oh, yeah. But we have a little girl, she's going to be four this December, and both of us being parents, it, it is both pretty hard watching that. But anyway, uh, Thurston, fantastic. Thank you. Being on that film, being on that set for a series that is known for its lightheartedness and its tongue in cheekness, how hard was that to switch it up for you for that type of a film? That wasn't hard because we almost lost Kevin. Right. Yeah. So, you know, there had been a different version of that script that had been written that I never got to read because he wrote it, wanted to shoot it, the third one, and then he got excited about this podcast or some article he read about this terrible roommate and that Mr. Tusk ended up being prioritized. Right. Which is still scarred from watching. <laughs> and, um, and then he almost died and had a, what they call a Widowmaker heart attack. Yeah. And then he rewrote three to be what it is now. Um, convinced me to do it because he said I was going to be a force ghost. And then when I showed up on set, he was like, A, I don't want to get sued, and B, I don't have that kind of money. Um, so I, I thought I wanted to do it like, I was like trying so hard, but we didn't get to do it. Um, but it was, it was just really special, and we were so grateful to all be together and have Kevin there and being healthy, you know, and Jason as well. Like, it's been Absolutely. such a transition and such a, like, I remember when we shot Clerks 2, Kevin would be locked up into this little room while we were filming in this, like, motel that was right adjacent to the place we were filming, and just, like, the plume of cigarette smoke that would come out when you open up the door and, like... You know, it was just the, the very unhealthy kind of practices back then that he's very forthright about now. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And, you know, I'm just so grateful that he's taken his health so seriously and that we still have him. We can keep playing. I have a little cameo in 430 movie. I don't know if you've seen the trailer. Let's go. Yeah. Coming of age story that he's done. It's just so dope. And while I saw something, he just said that a press that he was doing and he said another clerks. What? Yep. Yep. So, I don't know if I get to muscle my way into that one since he done really killed me. Um, but I would hope so. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, there's the other Jane Silent Look uh, sequel coming up, too. That's right, Jane Silent Look has got that, that. that follow-up. That's right. But thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. Awesome. Absolutely. I appreciate much. you. Blessings to your family. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Hi. So, the one of the things that we most liked about uh, Wicked Wolf is the 
or I'm assuming he's the second meeting between Luke and Ahsoka, and what do you think, besides the fate of Anakin, which would be the most interesting thing, would the second most interesting thing in that conversation be? And obviously, we'd love to see that, so please tell Dave, even if they just have the two of you, you and Mark Hamill, just sitting for an hour talking, we'd love to see that. <laughs> I mean, all I try to do is make him laugh so I can hear that Jumper laugh. <laughs> it's so good. We just did a reading of Fright Night for a podcast. What? Definitely check it out. It's so good. And it's most of the original cast. I was beside myself. Oh my god. Chris Sarandon for life. Yes. Um, and yeah, I'm obsessed with him. So that would be so great because I think, you know, there was a lot of behind the scenes yeah. kind of... Um, stage setting that Dave gave, gave us after I walked on stage and even found out who I was doing the scene with. Um, but I think, you know, I love, I think, when he doesn't give exactly what the fans want because it's just, it would be so loaded to have that conversation and, you know, it's, it's we're allowed to kind of just imagine it, you know, and kind of bring something else there. Um, but yeah, I would be so curious, you know, I think about there's that little comic strip that has come out where you see her talking with Luke yep. and you know him telling her that he turned to the light in the end. And her like, I, I like looking at the comics little strip that someone fan wrote, like with her welling of her eyes, like that's truly how I imagine that conversation going. So I have to say, I really love the fan fiction and art and things that comes out because I think it really fills in those spaces of the stuff that we all wish that we could see Absolutely. and as big and, and robust as the world has been expressed in all of these different films and things over the years you can't cover every moment right. and I just think it's so dope that so many of the fans fill in those spaces and voids and give people that experience and that texture that they add to it and that's definitely one for me that I feel like answers that beat. Makes me really Thank you. No. I have to be the bad guy and say that we only have like five minutes. No. Left. So if we can, if we can like lightning round, like yes or no type questions, can we do that? Yes. Okay. Good job. <laughs> um, my name is Annie. Um, actually, my actually now my uncle Charlie Adler. He's actually really good friends with Tim Curry. So I'm th <laughs> he actually is. That's awesome. He um, but and he is really a great guy. Awesome guy. But my question is actually knowing that Ahsoka was so popular in the animation world as you can tell. Um, did you watch the animations like the Rebels and all that to kind of help you prepare for the role of Ahsoka? Yes. Good job. <laughs> More than once. Hi, I apologize for bringing this up. I love you and Percy Jackson every single time I watch it. Thank um, you. Yeah. Yes. For Are the Leku heavy? They've gotten less heavy. Good. Right. There we go. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Right on. <laughs> Hello. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to phrase it as a yes or no question, but I, you can try to be brief. Um, what's your relationship like with Ashley Epstein and how did she influence your... I'm obsessed uh, with her. I love her. It looks like it in every single picture. It looks like I'm trying to eat her. Um, she's just wonderful and she's a Disney princess, like in real life, for sure. And the best signature. I'm sorry, guys. I tried to sign. I signed next to hers and I'm like, eh, she's got 15 years on me. Perfected. Hello, Rosario. Alejandro, uh, my question is, um, if you would ever do a Hot Ones interview, how far do you think you would make it? Would you like make it to the level 10 and be okay like most people, or do you actually think you'd like, fall apart? Or... I'm super competitive, so I would absolutely go through all the way, but it would be like a Ren and Stimpy episode. Like, it'd be... <laughs> like, it would be so bad. Ice cream bar, like, you know what I mean? Like, it would be... I would look insane. I, just, <laughs> I don't care. I will ugly cry Thank through you. that just to make it through. We need to have this happen. Keep my ghetto card. <laughs> yeah. no, I need it. I need it. Hello. Hey, hey Rosario. Um, I'll make this fast as possible. So when Ahsoka encounters Anakin in the world between worlds, where was she at, like, headspace-wise toward her old master at that point in time when she sees him? I think, I mean, you see it a little bit alluded to when she got to meet Grogu mm -hmm. and the question of, of, you know, taking him on as a Padawan. And, you know, as she said, he was the greatest. And where the depths to which he plunged, I think, is something that tremendously haunts her um, and scares her. Um, and I think that's, that's absolutely where she's at. So when she confronts him and she doesn't want to fight him, she doesn't want those different things, 
the idea that she has to vocally say, I choose to live, because I think a part of her has been dead. I think a part of her has just not been in expression. And so in that battle and that choice, and I love that, like some people question whether that happened or not, but it absolutely did. When she takes his saber from him, and the red in her in her eyes hits. It's like she does, she gets to that point of anger. She allows that all that frustration and pain to come to the to the to the hilt, and then she chooses to let it go. And I think what's so beautiful about that confrontation that they have in the conversation is that you know he asks her, "Is that all that I was? Is that all that I am?" Right. You know, and like really, I think gives us the gift to to imagine even in our worst when we've made terrible choices we can still uh, be appreciated for the depth and the, the, the wholeness of us. You know, we are not just our greatest moment or our worst. You know, there's so much more that we bring to the table and that's what makes life so beautiful, you know, is that constant choice that we have every single day to, yeah. to show up, you know, and try to be. Thank you. Can we get one more question? Can we get, can we get just one? Can, can we get to two? It's, it's one, literally four. Quick, 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 quick. Go, 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 go. I'm so sorry. Hi. My name is Christina. Hi. Um, I am actually uh, a former Disney cast member. I actually just finished my Disney college program at wow. Anaheim. Congrats. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, yes, it's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, as a former ca uh, Disney cast member, I love how storytelling brings people together. How do you think, uh, how do you make Ahsoka your own while also staying true to her Star Wars legacy, especially for fans who are just now discovering her? Um, I just, you know, my favorite moment, I think, on set was with Shauna before we even shot anything and trying on her new outfit and just realizing, like, I wasn't doing cosplay. I was doing a new story, a new adventure, like, and I think that's what's so great about this character. I think she's got one of the best developed arcs in Star Wars history, but I think in almost all, like, kind of when I think of so many different stories and places that I've looked at, like uh, she's just so remarkable to me and the idea that she still has some place to go. And that's one of the things that we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. but one of the things that I just love talking to Dave about it, because he always brings her to Gandalf. And that's something <laughs> that's like so interesting. When you first encounter Gandalf, I mean, he's just so omnipotent, you know, like there's yeah. the power that he has and even still he has levels of development yeah. and involvement you know, to evolve to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's what makes it so special. Like when you think of a Bruce Lee mm -hmm. and who still continues as a human being to push himself to be better, you know, and I just, his library of works and his writings and his, philo you know, philosophizing, like, he never took it for granted, the, his greatness and his, he just used that discipline to continue to, to, to develop his expertise. And I, I just, I like that, that you don't have, hit a place where like now I'm the greatest and then leave it at that. There's always still something to aspire to and that's what I see that we're getting to do with her. Thank you so much. Okay, um, we got one, we got one, one more, just one. Just, yeah, 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 okay, okay. I won't ask my extra long questions, very quick. And it's just a comment, not even a question. Uh, now I believe that perfect casting does exist. Aww. It's perfect. You're perfect. You're thank perfect. you. So thank you. Thank you. And it's Tim Curry as Frank and Burner. Do we all agree? Yeah. Also in Legend. Also in Clue. Also in Fern Gully. Is, also is, is that a young one? We got. We can't not have the young one. Good man. Good man. Go ahead. Okay, What's go your ahead. question? So how did it feel? When you first met Grogu, and did he actually feel real? And did he what? Feel real. Actually feel real? real. Yes. yes. Um, Grogu is really, really cute. Um, never mind the creepy teeth. And, um, is really, really adorable. And I have to say it was really cool because the guys who operate him are the same people who operated uh, the worm guys in Men in Black 2. Um, which is really cool. And it's just remarkable. I, I, I got to be there on the day that George Lucas, the only time he's come to visit on any of the show's sets was on Ahsoka, just before um, the big battle between um, myself and Morgan Elspeth. And that blurry picture that John posted that almost broke the internet, I was standing right next to him. I got cropped out. Um, they weren't revealing that yet. Um, and, you know, we were just all, it's amazing, you know, when you're holding him and there's different people operating him, but the ears are moving, the eyes are moving, the mouth is moving, the hands are moving. Um, 
and it's just really, really, really cool. Like there's just something. So I, I love puppets and you know uh, real props that we get to use, and um, there's just something so amazing and powerful, and magical because he's like a little baby Yoda, you know. So we loved him before we even knew he existed. So, you know. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Uh, forgive me, guys, Thanks that are in line, but we do have to wrap it up right now. You, can, you I just get, can I just give a shout out? Um, yeah. He's like, yo, to my mom. Everybody shout out. out. Everybody <laughs> shout out. <laughs> to Sin City One and Two. Right on. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Phoenix, awesome. Chicago, make some noise. Yeah. 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 Yeah.